Since his first appearance in Jojo Leon, the head doctor has been a figure shrouded in mystery. He goes out of his way to make his true identity unknown to the public, and defeating him has more become a matter of unmasking him, a la Scooby-Doo, and overpowering him. Discovering his identity is sure to be vital for Gappy's victory in the current arc, and the head doctor's ability is one that actively prevents his identity from being discovered. It's pretty much a guarantee at this point that we'll be learning what the deal is with the head doctor in the coming months. But hey, I want to see if we can beat the cast of Jojolian to the punch on this one. So let's review the past year of Jojolian and see if we can figure out the mystery of the head doctor. And I said the past year, but to start, we're gonna have to go a bit further back. Because our introduction to the Head Doctor is in fact not the Head Doctor's own arc, but actually all the way back in the Ozone Baby arc. He and Wutomaki arrive on the scene in an ambulance, nab the Rokakaka branch, pop poor Tom, and make a getaway. According to the street records Yasuho looks up in the next arc, the one who grabbed the branch was Wutomaki, meaning the one who was driving was the Head Doctor, Satoru Akefu. This is another scenario where Araki uses silhouettes to mask the identities of future stand users, so we can't really rely on much information from the scene. But do keep in mind that in this scene, the Rock humans mention Gappy by name, meaning they know who he is. This will be relevant later. So we proceed through the Dr. Wu fight. He claims he never fails, then immediately fails two seconds later. Whatever, it doesn't matter. As far as I can tell, he doesn't give any insight into the head doctor at any point. But someone else introducing this arc does. Toru... Toru... Apparently we don't know Toru's last name, which is really odd considering Araki tends to drop a full resume with every character's introduction, but we'll overlook that for now. Anyways, we'll eventually learn that Toru has directly interacted with the head doctor before, so we should pay close attention to his actions. We'll start with his introduction. He inconspicuously enters the scene and says hello when he sees Yasuho. Yasuho requests that he go get Gappy for her, and he does so without any complaints. He's a bit flirtatious, but we have no reason to believe he's being anything but genuinely amicable towards Yasuho. There is something off about this interaction though that comes when Yasuho first mentions Gappy by name. Prior to that moment, Toru gives a slight indication that he wants to get back in touch with Yasuo, but isn't all that invested in doing so. But when Gappy is name dropped, Toru has a brief moment where he suddenly gets very serious looking. Now if we give him the benefit of the doubt, we can assume this is likely just him feeling a tiny bit jealous that the girl he regrets breaking up with is getting friendly with some nautical nuisance. But if we assume that he's a lying scumbag that's in cahoots with the rock humans, because I mean, look at him then he's reacting this way because he knows that Gappy was the one pursuing the Rokakaka branch. Remember, the Rock humans know Gappy by name, so if Toru is working with them, then he would as well, and as a result would understandably want to know why his ex is bringing him up. Either way though, he does go to get Gappy, which means regardless of his motivation, he is genuinely trying to stay in Yasuo's good graces. After Wutomaki's defeat, the gang looks into the head doctor, and learns that he is in fact 89 years old. Get used to hearing that phrase, because with how often it's said and questioned, it's definitely something important. The ages listed use Wu Tomaki's physical age of 33 years old, not his true age of around 70, which means that, assuming the head doctor is a rock human, he would not be 89 years old, but would actually be even older. But forget about that, Toru's back guys! He shows up in a van, makes a bit of small talk, then switches the topic back to Yasuho's relationship with Gappy. Whether he's motivated by Yasuho or the branch, it's pretty much confirmed at this point that Gappy is Toru's main concern, and the reason he's suddenly become proactive. The gang returns to the hospital and Mamazuku speaks with the receptionist. From this discussion, we establish that the members of the staff have met with the head doctor, and the head doctor meets with clients privately. The head doctor passes by, and the dangerous pursuit begins. They chase the head doctor into a stairwell, and right before they go down it, a stand appears behind the group. Gappy senses it, and then retaliates, but the stand disappears. It's clear that the stand has been activated for some reason, but it isn't clear why or what it's doing. They follow the head doctor, but crash into a stretcher on the way out of the stairwell, and lose track of him. The stretcher was being moved by Toru, who is really pushing the definition of coincidental run-in, with how often he's been bumping into the group. He requests that Yasuo help him with a child who is suffering from cardiac arrest. Once the child is saved, Gappy confronts Toru, and claims that he's been interfering with them, and he makes a really good point. There's a lot which Toru has done up until now that has been suspicious, and at a certain point it becomes difficult to justify it as simply him trying to reconnect with Yasuo, as his actions are beginning to coordinate with that of the head doctors. 
For example, if Toru was really in the middle of saving this kid, then why isn't he wearing his white coat? We just got done establishing the chapter prior with the head doctor that the medical staff that are on the job wear their white coats, and removing it like Toru has means you're off the job. He added on while he was washing sheets and moving stuff around, so the only reason he wouldn't be wearing it in this scenario is because he wasn't on the job just moments prior, which means that Gappy is correct about Toru going out of his way to interfere with their pursuit for some reason. Also, I mean, look at him. No one stands that menacingly unless they're pure evil. Toru rejects Gappy's claims and points him to the chairs where the head doctor is sitting. Gappy didn't notice him there before, but I mean, how could he? The head doctor wasn't sitting there before. He suddenly appeared out of nowhere and waited for them to catch up before walking again. We learn later that his ability doesn't require that he be in close proximity once it's been activated, so he had no reason to stay in range. The only reason he would go out of his way to do so would be if he wanted the group to chase him. The next scene features Mitsuba, and during it she passes by a security feed that shows the head doctor near Surugi's school. Then, in the following chapter, she catches a glimpse of the head doctor outside the Higashikata estate. We know from the Dr. Wu fight that the rock humans were attempting to use Mitsuba to spy on the Higashikata family, and what the head doctor seems to be doing here is perform reconnaissance as a means to the same end. Mitsuba looks back, and he's disappeared without a trace, much like he did when Gappy, Yasuho, and Rai were pursuing him. Speaking of Gappy, Yasuho, and Rai, we jump back to them as they are once again pursuing the head doctor. Stop right there, head doctor, Gappy shouts. You're a rock human, aren't you? Now, I thought this was a really odd thing for Gappy to say, given that the head doctor is almost certainly a rock human like the rest of the TG University doctors. But then I started thinking, and I realized something. We really don't have any overt evidence that the head doctor is a rock human like the rest of the TG University doctors. We simply assume so because Rai assumes so. Think of what Rai says in prior chapters. First he claims that the head doctor's name and age don't matter because he's a rock human, but after he says that he's constantly questioning if the head doctor is really 89 years old. It seems like he's contradicting himself until you actually consider the reason he's questioning his age. Remember, the age listed online is the age they appear to be. If the head doctor is a rock human, then him actually being way older than his appearance would suggest wouldn't change the fact that his physicality would be equivalent to that of an old man. The reason Rai is questioning whether he's really 89 is not because he seems older than his appearance would suggest, but rather because he seems younger. The supposedly old man who needs a cane to walk is constantly outpacing our group, led by a guy who can apparently clear 100 meters in about 11 seconds, and Rai understandably considers that a bit suspicious. So we should consider that the head doctor may not even be a rock human in the first place, but rather something else entirely. The group keeps following the head doctor, but find that they are constantly being interfered with. They decide to corner him from each side, but still somehow lose him. Yasuho checks the security footage and says that he's moving at the speed you'd expect of an 89 year old man. So the reason he's able to outpace them so easily must be related to his stance ability, not his physical body. Despite that, we will come to learn soon of the head doctor's true ability, and it seems unrelated, so something is definitely up here. But first is another interference by Toru, who calls Yasuho's phone and then leaves a voicemail. We should discuss Yasuho's phone a bit, because it's been undergoing a bit of a journey itself, and the fact that Toru is even making this call is suspicious. Yasuho's phone was originally destroyed during the events of the Dr. Wu fight, and this fact is brought up in pretty much every interaction between her and Toru. First, Yasuo tells Toru that her phone is broken, and Toru in turn tells that to Gappy. The next time they meet up, Toru says that he remembers Yasuo mentioning that her phone was broken, and reminds her to get it fixed. Yasuo gets it fixed before they return to the hospital, and uses it in an attempt to take a picture of the head doctor, but she puts it away before she and Toru meet again. She doesn't take it back out again until just before Toru calls her, when she's checking the security footage. Assuming Toru didn't just decide to call a busted phone on a whim, this means two things. First is that despite Toru not being there when Gappy looks back in the direction they came from, he was able to see the group from somewhere else, since he knew he was able to call Yasuho's phone. And second is that the phone and the mention of Toru and Yasuho's shared memories together was a bit of manufactured drama created for Gappy's sake. Acknowledging this makes it apparent that Toru's actions can be justified less and less by simple jealousy. The frequency and specificity of the interactions between him and the group may seem innocuous on the surface, but they're very likely premeditated in a way intended to isolate Yasuho from the rest of the group. I think it's about time we start considering that the real threat of this arc is not the head doctor of the TG University Hospital, but rather the unassuming med student who works there part-time. 
The title of the Head Doctor arc in the original magazine release was first the Head Doctor of the TG University Hospital, and then became Dangerous Pursuit, but in the volume releases it was changed to The Wonder of You, The Miracle of Your Love, based on the song that was popularized by Elvis Presley. The song is about a person who, despite loving someone, can't quite understand why they are loved by them in return, which matches the scenario shown by this current arc. Gappy doesn't understand why Yasuho continues to stand by his side despite his lack of memories, and as such, Toru, being someone that Yasuho does have memories with, is an external representative of that internal conflict. It also fits the larger purpose of the Head Doctor in the narrative. Just as the Head Doctor is a distraction from the truth side of the arc, Toru, he's also a distraction from Gappy's current goal. Gappy wants to obtain the Rokakaka to heal Holly, and ignoring that the Head Doctor is the cause of Holly's current state, defeating him won't grant Gappy the Rokakaka he needs since the Head Doctor doesn't have it in the first place. Let's return to the Head Doctor's ability. Rai describes it as something knocking into him in an abnormal way, and because of the Head Doctor's odd behavior, he assumes it's occurring because they are pursuing him. As Gappy and Yasuho give chase, the wheels on the bus go round and round, knocking a used cigarette right into Gappy's hand, causing him to bleed. From this we can conclude that the things knocking into the stand's target are not directly chosen by the user, but rather influenced by something like coincidence or fate. The effects of the stand cause Gappy to accidentally kill some random guy, forcing him and Rai to flee. With them gone and Yasuho all alone, Toru swoops back in to take advantage of the situation. He mentions calling her and says that he'd testify in support of Gappy, likely as a means of currying favor with her. Next, a bunch of junk with Ojiro happens. Moving on, we return to Gappy and Rai as they sit in Jobin's golden Lamborghini, which they somehow got into a tree. They discuss how the head doctor intends on giving a lecture at the hospital, and Rai makes it clear that he wants to see the head doctor's face in order to learn his true identity. They set off to wait at the lecture hall, and as soon as they resolve to depart, the stand that appeared in the stairway appears behind them once more, confirming that it is a long distance stand, seeing as the head doctor is nowhere to be seen. Now is as good a time as any to discuss the elephant in the room regarding the stand's appearance. Those eyes. We've seen a similar sun-like pattern on Toru's outfit. Now, this symbol isn't always consistently drawn. It's typically drawn as a sun shape, but in the chapter Toru is introduced, it looks more like a flower. And in his most recent appearance, the sun rays were drawn slightly rounder in most panels. But because most of the time it's a sun shape, including the chapter the stand debuted, we're going to assume that there's an intentional link. The stand is most likely Toru's, which could mean any number of things, but first and foremost means that there is a stand in play not being directly controlled by the head doctor. And Toru works for the TG University Hospital, right? So the most obvious conclusion is that he and the head doctor are working together. But that can't be the case, or at the very least it isn't likely. If Toru is working with the rock humans as much as his current involvement would suggest, then he would have been studying the Rokakaka in the lab. Despite that, there were only four people who entered the Rokakaka lab. Urban Gorilla, Poor Tom, Wu Tomoki, and of course, the head doctor himself, which leaves no room for Toru. There is, however, another option. Perhaps Toru himself is the head doctor. It all fits together perfectly if you think about it. The obsessive questioning of the head doctor's age, despite rock humans naturally having weird aging. The head doctor appearing when Toru needs to draw suspicion away from himself. The large focus on uncovering the head doctor's true identity. The head doctor's reclusive nature. Holly's claim that the head doctor has no face, even when you see his face earlier in that very same chapter. Jobin not being able to see the head doctor when Yasuho and Mitsuba are able to see him. The head doctor's vacant and soulless eyes. It all leads to one bigger truth, and that's that Toru and the Head Doctor are the same person. Or rather, the Head Doctor is an illusion created by Toru's stand ability. Take a look at the name Satoru Akefu. The kanji for Ake means bright or insightful, while the kanji for Fu means to lose or to remove. So put together, Akefu would mean something like to lose insight, while Satoru means to realize or become aware of. Altogether, it kinda sounds like a warning. Be aware, or you will lose insight. The Head Doctor's ability seems terrifying and almost invincible to those under its effects, but in reality, it's nothing more than a puppet show with a glaring weakness. So long as you continue to fall for the illusion, things will keep crashing into you. But if you realize the user's true identity, then they have no way of defending themselves, because you would no longer be pursuing the illusion. Assuming this is the case, it puts a lot of Toru's actions into context. He never goes out of his way to directly antagonize the group. Rather, he lets them chase after the illusion, while simultaneously trying to isolate Yasuho. 
When Toru and Yasuho are sitting together on her porch, he tells her about his aspirations and anxiety about his youth and future. His way of channeling the anxiety and anger he felt was through his attempt to patent the idea of a wireless charging cable, but that ended in failure. The Rokakaka must have been his next attempt to channel that anxiety, which would explain why the head doctor holds a lecture to talk about the Rokakaka under the pretense of a new medicinal breakthrough to the world. Previously, the Daimokan group was more concerned about making money and didn't want to alert the world at large about the Rokakaka, but Toru wants the glory that comes with a major scientific advancement, which is why there's a distinct difference in priorities. And what irony that a guy so concerned about his own youth would channel that into the form of an elderly man. So that is my final conclusion and theory for what is really going on in The Wonder of You arc. The Head Doctor is nothing more than an illusion created by Toru in order to make a mark on the world in some way. He uses this illusion to isolate Yasuho from Gappy and Rai and infiltrate the Higashikata estate. Of course, we'll likely know very soon whether this is the case or not, but I'm interested in hearing what you all think. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know, and together we might just be able to figure out if the head doctor is really 89 years old.